So, welcome back to my small corner of the internet. Previously, you've seen me build this thing. And now I'm going to show you how I use it. For this first documented project, not counting the spoil board, I'm going to show you how to build a wall hanging clock. So, let's go! So to check the year code without wasting any router bits, I'm first going to run a test cut of the entire project using XPS foam. This is hard polystyrene foam that cuts and sands fairly easily. And it's a great way to test code and get your feet wet without risking too much. Since it's really lightweight and cuts easily, I'm just going to hold it down with double sided tape. So I'm definitely going to call that a success. I did miss up a bit during the tool change, but nothing too bad and it's on me, not the machine or the program. So the next step is to go back to the CAD software and make sure I have a hole in the middle for the, the actual clock. After that I'm going to post it to G-code again and then it's time for MDF. So since the MDF is going to take slightly more force to cut, I won't use double sided tape for this one. I'll instead use screws in each corner. I do want to get or build some type of clamp system, but that's in the future. So let's set up the zero position and get to cutting. So now everything is set and it's time to hit the start button. Fingers crossed.
so let's not mess up during this tool change, shall we? So, 6mm end mill. So, this time I didn't mess up, and now it's time to hit start. But I did mess up there. And that's why I need a dust collector system. So let me just clean this up real quick and then I'll show you what it looks like. So here's the result from milling the front side at close range. And as you can see all the letters and lines and everything ended up really crisp and nice. And that's even though I didn't use the best engraving bit. Uh, this is just a regular Sheepo router bit and it has a bit of a flat top. So the detail could have been quite a bit better if I used a sharp one, but still, this is more than adequate. <laughs> so the only thing I've done to clean it up so far is to use this 320 grit foam backed sandpaper. And I just ran it across the top and the edges to remove any type of like uh, burrs like this. And that was uh, more than adequate and the result is better than I hoped for. Now I'm still debating whether or not I want to add any color to the lines and to the letters and also to the griff in here, but that's a future question. Right now it's time to flip it over and mill the pocket for the clock on the back side. So here's the piece we just finished cutting out on the CNC router. I cleaned up all the tabs. Just a bit of 120 grit sandpaper, cleaned them up real good. And I did do a quick test just coloring in these letters. And the black paint does give a lot better contrast, so I think I'm gonna color in these letters as well, and also the griffin, but I'm gonna leave the lines as they are. So now I just need to rummage around a bit and see if I have any black paint I can use for the griffin and these letters. Now it's time to let the paint dry and with the help of a little bit of movie magic, that's finished right about now. And we're back. Uh, so it's been a couple of days since we shot that last clip and the paint has dried and I actually took the opportunity to sand down the excess off camera. And unfortunately there was some slight bleed through around the, the fine detail both around the griffin and around the text down here. So I think a better way to have done this would have been to put down a layer of clear coat first to seal up the MDF. Then paint in all the letters and the griffin, then sand down the excess, because I think that should prevent the bleed through. But honestly it's not too bad and it's looking quite okay, especially from a distance, so... The next step is to put a layer of clear coat on.
And now we're waiting for paint to dry again. And through a bit more movie magic the clear coat is finally dry and the only thing left before hanging this on the wall is installing the clock and the hanger. Clocks like these are really cheap and clock faces make neat little projects. I mean you can knock one out in an afternoon no problem. If I hadn't bothered filming this entire project I think I have around 1 to 1.5 hours of actual working time on it. I got a packet of 4 of these on Amazon for like 12 bucks, there will be a link down in the description for those that are interested. And luckily enough these actually came with a hanger. So which ones should I use you think? Are we going simple or not so simple? I think I will go with the simplest ones. So there you have the first real project on the Queen Bee Pro CNC finished, if we're not counting the spoil board. As you could see I still have three clocks left in the packet of four I bought on Amazon, so there might be one or two more clocks in the future. But for the next project I'm planning an upgrade for the CNC. As you might have seen when cutting this project, and especially the spoil board, dust collection is a real problem. So in the next episode I'm going to tackle that. And as always, if you like what you're seeing, let me know. Like the video, subscribe, leave a comment, send me an email, check me out on Instagram. There'll be links to everything I've talked about down in the description as usual. And till next time.